Photo X1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, <clears throat> uh, there is this Swedish saying, Nu har du tagit dig vatten över huvudet. Which is uh, basically a direct translation, now you really pulled water over your head. Which uh, is kind of the Swedish equivalent of, uh, what is it now? <laughs> You've bitten off more than you can chew. But anyway, there is a little bit of a nostalgia in this, yeah, I know. 31 years old and trying and starting to feel nostalgia. Well, I would rather say then you're never too young to start feeling nostalgic. I mean, there's all types of things that you can feel nostalgic about. Well, I was actually, you know when sometimes when you find something in maybe an old drawer or whatever and it's, you, you know, you're just tra are transported back to uh, something in the past. Well, it started a little bit when I was uh, the final days of work before my vacation. And uh, it turned out that a nurse that worked in another unit uh, actually was a former cl uh, parallel classmate of mine when we went to a private school together years back. And then I started to thinking about back a little bit and I remembered that, hey, you know, this school had a lot of extracurricular activities and one of the most universally liked teachers uh, actually started a scuba diving club. And I actually was in it. As simple as that. So what I had managed to find was actually my old textbook from when we, or rather one of my two old textbooks from when we were in the diving club. So actually that was the entire premise was that we were learning to scuba dive and this was no, you know, uh, four a day course or anything. No, we actually took one and a half semester uh, to do this. So it wasn't an intensive course. This was uh, going the long route to become safe and so on. So I remember how we actually got to, when the school day was over, we went to the scuba club and so on. So actually, I managed to find these old folders with all the course material and so on. So, yeah, first we got the beginner course guide for becoming, and this was actually Paddy. Uh, yeah, I know that if there are any other scuba divers that are watching this channel, the, in the unlikelihood they are. Well, first we had the open water course. And then it was the next step, the course book for how to uh, improve and uh, get more specialized and so on. Yeah. And of course all the other goodies and so on, the, the dive tables, how to calculate a dive and so on, surface intervals, all of that good stuff. <coughs> but anyway, let's see, we're gonna do what so. Yeah, another one. And it's uh, nice when you have, you know, when you... When you actually find these old artifacts, or almost, like, see... And actually, I'm, I think I'm gonna take a, a image of uh, one of these uh, papers, because there is a printout picture here, actually, of yours truly in full scuba <laughs> gear. So that's a little bit of a... Fun reminder and so on. Well, the uh, boring part about this actually is that I'm way out of practice with anything of this. I mean, uh, after we graduated, we did a diving trip actually, the entire group to Malta of all places, which was very interesting. Um, a lot of memories from that and um, after that, it was basically two years of doing a little bit of whatever, then, well, no, four years of gymnasial studies, two years of doing whatever, and then six years of higher education, and now two years after that, here I am. So I took this uh, certification in 2005, so for the date of this video, it's about 15 years ago. Yikes. 
So uh, yeah, I'm out, of pr I'm out of practice for this for 15 years, so I don't consider myself qualified really to do this safely anymore. But uh, sometimes you just find that little kick that will, you know, kickstart you into maybe starting to indulge in this once again. And actually, you know, just put the books back here to get a little bit more room on the table because this channel is more known for its photographic gear related. So actually, <clears throat> and if you're the vintage guys out there, you will probably get a kick out of this one because uh, I went out on Tradera and I just for fun typed in a search word and I think I actually got a real bargain here. Yeah, this little duffel bag, whatever you want to call it. And some other, another little accessory that we're gonna go to later. But anyway, you know that I'm into film photography. I need to wax this, this zipper here. Well, this will basically, if you can read this, it will basically give away what, what this uh, bag contains. And it's not, maybe it's not the one that you would expect it to be. But anyway, here it is in all its glory. Let's see here now. The Nikonos IVA or Nikonos 4A. And uh, if I'm going to do a reference between a normal Nikon camera and the Nikonos, uh, this particular model, imagine this is a little bit like a Nikonos EM. It's an aperture priority camera. I think that's what the A in IVA stands for. IV is just the Roman letter for four. So it's the fourth generation Nikonos underwater camera. This is not a camera housing or anything. This is a dedicated underwater uh, film photography camera. So it has this little more, you know, latch really to open the film back. As you can see, I'm probably gonna do some B-roll of this as well. And there is a gasket system here. And I believe this gasket seems to be, from my visual inspection here, in pretty good nick, so I would say that I believe this camera might still be working underwater, which might I might try out in the future, who knows. But anyway, it's a kind of a, a very simplex camera for being such a specialized niche. It has, uh, you know, it can use ASA ISO from 25. Don't know if, if there exists film today that is still made today that is ISO 25 up to 1600, so 1600. Then you have a mode dial that has four settings A for aperture priority, M, which is I believe it's a 190th of a second uh, mechanical setting, a B for bulb mode, and a R for rewind. So you have the standard rewind crank here you know and the opening to get a film in and out and so on and uh, then you have this orange shutter button and a shutter lock system so that you will lock it out so it won't uh, fire uh, or rather you won't expose unnecessarily but also I've told you in uh, previous videos <coughs> excuse me that I'm not that fond of uh, range finders, but this one is not really a range finder. It's basically just a window that you look through in order to take the pic compose the picture. And it's basically more of a TLR when the top lens doesn't really have any connection to the bottom lens that is actually taking the image. And you actually have this silver and this black knob on the front side of, the, of this lens. And the silver one is to do the focus. And a little bit of a neat thing about the Nikonos is that it has a universal uh, adapter or a universal mount for the Nikonos lenses. What I mean with that is that it doesn't matter if I take it so it's in this configuration or if I turn it around and put it the other way around. 
A lot of people who are into scuba diving and who have used these cameras tell that they usually put it on like this. So when they are using the camera, in order to check their settings, they just flip it like so. Because when you're holding the camera upside down, the numbers will actually appear the right way up. So they will actually just pull them, pull it towards themselves. And when they do, they can actually check their settings that they are accurate to what they are doing. So, yeah, so this camera and also in the bag, I got some of the, you know, the usual stuff, the uh, manuals, the brochures, so on, and some other bits and pieces, you know, and uh, of course also with a camera like this that has a lot of gaskets and so on, there's a couple of things you really need. Let's see here if I can find it. Yeah. You have some gasket kits and so on, and you have gasket grease. You actually have to grease the O-rings on this one to keep it watertight, and so on. And also I got one of these little beauties. What is this then? Well, the Nikonos system is an SLR system, camera system. So you are actually able to change the lenses of this camera. And uh, it's not advisable that you do it on the water. You won't because it will flood the entire camera. So you basically, you choose a lens for the planned dive and you stick with that uh, until you re reach the surface dry the cam, rinse off the uh, equipment, dry it off, and then you can always change to another lens on the surface. So, what I have on this camera right now is the 35mm f2.5. And because of something called refraction on the, the surface, uh, this will actually act more uh, like a 50mm. So yeah, that's a little bit, it's not a crop factor that one, it's because of the magnificent magnifying qualities of water. And I also got one of these. It's the uh, Nikkor 80mm f4. And uh, what is significant with this one? Well, it is a 80mm, uh, 80mm, so this is basically the Nikonos uh, version of a telefocus. So it is a more of a tele lens. It has a nearest distance of one meter and it goes up to infinity, but uh, the, the largest number before infinity is 20 meters or 60 feet. And I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, to a promo video for the Nikonos 5, the successor to this one, where they actually give a lot of neat tips and tricks on how to use that camera effectively. And uh, a lot of those things actually applies to the predecessor, the 4, as well. So it's a little bit nice to have the entire assembly as such, with the camera and so on. But there is something else with this, because when I bought this, there was another little piece in the bag, so to speak, or rather not so little. <clears throat> yeah, you might have seen the brochure as well. This is the... Let's see if I can say, yeah, Toshiba TM2, Toshiba Photo Products, uh, made in Japan. So this is actually a flash unit for the uh, Nikonos 4 camera. And uh, the thing with this one is that you have the flash gun on this bracket, and down here you actually have a light sensor. So yeah, what you actually do then is that, let's see if I, don't, didn't I have a coin here? I believe I did. Oh yes, I did. Well, I'm just going to show you a little bit quickly how to mount the flash here then. First of all, you put the camera on M. So you use the mechanical shutter speed in order to use flash photography with this camera. Then you take the... Let's see if I can do this. Oh yes.
So there is actually a flash uh, connection on the bottom here. And this little plug that you have to unscrew also has an O-ring on it to keep everything watertight. And it's a three peg connection down there that is uh, still in a good nick, I would say. Let's see so I don't tangle. This one is actually, I think, modified because one of the cords are yellow and the other one is black. And it should, this flash should have two yellow cords. I think this must have been, been modified if the original cord broke or something. But it has the correct Nikonos 4 uh, connector. So, red dot, white dot, put them together, no force, just push them together. And then you, un you screw in the connection as such. Then you just put it like so. You have a tripod socket. Let's see if I'm just going to do it like so. Finger tight. There we go. And here's the entire system. So you just turn the flash on to the appropriate setting. Uh, and it has a little tablet here, tablet here that if you're going to use the auto setting for big depth of field. So uh, for instance then it says uh, ISO 50, 64. You should use F8. For ISO 100 speed films, uh, F11. And for ISO 400, uh, F22. So in between 22 and 11 there is uh, F-stop 16. So if I have loaded it with F2 with ISO 200 film, it has uh, yeah, I would have it at F16, the manual 190th of a second, and uh, the way they show in that Nikonos film in how to uh, dis uh, measure distance and that the flash gun and the camera is in a good orientation for each other, you basically hold the camera away from you. And if you can look in both the lens and the flash, uh, and you can see both of them, you're basically very easily in a good mode for about a three feet distance, if I understood it correctly. So if you have an arm that can reach you out about three feet, then you, uh, you can always you know, use it as a measuring stick that, okay, that's how far away that object is. You just so, and as you can see, yeah, just uh, try, and if I was going to go down then, and let's see if I want a shallow depth of field, F4, F8, so in between, F, in between there you have F5, 6, so I want to use F5, 6, which is a shallower, I can use so, and so yeah, very interesting camera system, the Nikonos line. I know that Nikon tried to do a compact camera that uh, a few years back, uh, I think it was in the Nikon 1 system, they tried to kind of re, uh, remake the Nikonos, but it was a Nikon 1, if it was SW or WS or something like that, I'll probably put a picture of it. Um, also, probably a fairly decent camera. If you have any any experience with it, please put it in the comment section below. But there you have it. Uh, the uh, find in an old in an old cupboard uh, by a chance encounter at work and uh, memories back to uh, when you were a kid. And uh, yeah, I think actually I have a little bit of an interest in uh, taking up scuba diving again. And uh, this might be the kick in the backside that I needed. Because photography is a great hobby of mine, and these cameras were really known to be very cool and can take really awesome images underwater. And also, with one of these, if you want to, you can just unscrew this, pull it all off, and uh, if you're neutrally buoyant, can always hold this out so so uh, 
as you can see, a little bit of creativity under the under the waves. Have it like so, retightening in it. There we go. Yeah, the Nikonos IVA or Nikonos 4A, the automatic little Nikonos camera uh, for underwater photography. And uh, yeah, if you have any uh, any experience with this camera or any other camera in the Nikonos line, uh, please put it in the comment section below. I would love to hear your experience, what lenses were good, what lenses were not that good, whatever. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna end with that. Let's see if I can take this. Yeah, it didn't. So, didn't bite me this time. Let's see here. Let's put, uh, take this off and replace the little plunger. But anyway, I think this will be all for me for now. And as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. And I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. So take care for now. Bye.